Hey guys, it's Mary, and I'm back with an all-new raw video <laughs> review vlog. I don't know why I have such a problem saying that, but every week I, uh, um, it's rainy day in Jersey. Um, I got a lot to cover, even though it was not a great raw. Again, I feel like we're back on the decline now. They gave us like a whole bunch of good stuff, and then they're like, eh, well, we don't want them to get used to it. So I'm going to try to cover everything. I got a lot of stuff going on at my house that I want to get done today. There's important other issues going on right now in the world that I feel might be a little more important than wrestling right now. But that's besides the point. Um, so Monday Night Raw opened. Uh, with all the competitors of the Money in the Bank ladder match in the center of the ring on ladders. It was kind of hokey, but it was kind of funny. They were doing something different. I thought the banter between everybody was good, especially Cesaro going at Jericho. Like, everybody going back and forth, I thought it was good. Some people say it was campy. Um, you know, Dean Ambrose was talking about, you know, fighting polar bears, but, you know, Daniel Bryan fought a bear once, I mean, and everybody loved that, you know, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, please Google Daniel Bryan fighting bears, because it's hilarious. Um, so that happened, it turned into singles matches between, you know, the competitors in the match. Um, it is now looking like it's only going to be six, not seven competitors, and um, I don't know why. So, you know, we were talking about it on Busted Open the other day. Dave thinks that the seventh competitor might have been Cody Rhodes Stardust. Um, I don't know. But right now it's at six. So that was, you know, the storyline for Money in the Bank. Um, Teddy Long came out shortly after this and was on the show the whole night. And Steph was, like, kind of burying him and trying to get rid of him and stuff like that. And it came out of left field, like... Teddy Long has been seen in years. He is the former GM of SmackDown. It looks like it has to do with a storyline about SmackDown going live. Um, with him trying to get his job back or getting a job back. Um, does this mean we're going to see a whole bunch of former GMs show up now? Like trying to get jobs because SmackDown is going live? Maybe. They kind of did this whole thing when AJ Lee got put as the uh, Raw GM. So it's kind of, you know, recycled, but it was just weird. I mean, I didn't need it, but, you know, everybody likes when he comes out and books ridiculous tag team matches. A result of that was that he said that the one of the um, things that he said was that it would be a great opportunity to have a fatal four-way for the tag team titles at Money in the Bank. Uh, Stephanie dismissed him and then stole his idea and booked it. So at Money in the Bank, it's going to be the Bald Villains versus Enzo and Cass versus Anderson and Gallows versus the New Day for um, the WWE tag team titles. So that came out of that. Um, the biggest thing that happened on Raw was the promo between AJ Styles and John Cena, which I thought was fantastic. Um, AJ, I feel, is very comfortable, and he has a lot more leeway being a heel, and I feel like he's getting more comfortable being on the mic because he's actually getting time to do and show what he can, so I think he's killing it. Um, people are saying that, you know, John Cena killed him. People are saying that AJ... There was a lot of realism in their promo, which, you know, made it better. So, um, a couple points is that, you know, Cena turned around and said that the electricity that happened when Styles and him were in the ring last week was only comparable to The Rock, and that's a huge compliment towards AJ Styles. I, I agree. Um, he said it's a W, uh, not a W, it's a WrestleMania dream match, which I also agree. I'm so looking forward to this feud. I don't care what anybody says. Um, he called out AJ. AJ came out, was like, you know, you insult me every time the bell rings. You know, I could wrestle circles around you. You don't want to wrestle me. The reason why I haven't wrestled you is because you know you can't beat me. And, I, you know, people don't want to see that. It was very CM Punk-like and the things that he was saying. Because Punk had said a couple of these things when him and John were in their feud. Which, in my personal opinion, is the only true feud that's happened in the last, like, 15 years was Punk and Cena. Um, I was so into it. But uh, Cena says it took him all the time to get to WWE. It took him 15 years, and that's the same. You know, that's the only insult he could come up with, and that's what everybody says. So it's you know the same shtick, like you know. But John Cena has proved himself in the last year, which I you know since he hasn't been injured when before he was injured when he was U.S. champ, he's been doing the best in ring work that he's done in his career, in my personal opinion, since he first debuted. 
He's pulling a lot of stuff out of his arsenal. So you can't really knock John about that. And like I said, whenever he gets in the ring with somebody like an EJ Styles, a CM Punk, a Sami Zayn, a Kevin Owens, he puts on amazing matches. So say what you want about Cena, he's, he delivers. And he's he's the guy. He's still the guy, you know. So um, Cena did ask, though, why the club was there. And AJ shot on him or shoot shoot promo kind of and he was like because everybody knows once you wrestle john cena and you lose you should get out the shovels because you bury them which is very 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 true that he wasn't lying about that i kind of stood up in my living room and applauded him when he did that because you know is the elephant in the room what's gonna happen is aj gonna go over aj should go over um i think that john's going to put him over but you know the only person who really hasn't been affected you know as of late of that John Cena curse, because you could say Sandow, and you could say Rusev, and you could say all these other people in the past that have wrestled John, at, you know, Zack Ryder Association, like, all these people, um, but Kevin Owens beat him in his debut match, you know, clean, first time, and Owens did lose the series to him, but it didn't affect him. Kevin Owens is still pretty much at the top, and he's one of the top heels in the company, I would say number two. Um, he's amazing. I mean, Jericho, him and him flip-flop, but Jericho's better, right? but I'm saying for new guys. So, I think Styles should win the first match. I don't know how long it's going to go. I think this could go on for a very long time. I, I, like I said last week, you got the two, you know, AJ was the face of TNA for a long time, you know? So, there are two rival companies, and now they're in the same place. So... We will see what happens. Um, I really, really hope that AJ does go over, though. So, I, I, you know, and I think John's at that type point in his career that he, he's starting to realize that, you know, he needs to prepare for the next generation if he loves his business so much. So, there's that. Uh, side notes. Uh, the Fighting World Combat Sports lost Muhammad Ali this week, uh, or last week, at 74 years old. We did a whole bunch of coverage on, uh, Sirius XM Rush. If you have on, if you have Sirius XM Rush, you know, go on demand. There was a tribute show on Saturday. We covered it on At The Fights. It's another show that I work on on the channel on Friday. Uh, we covered it on Busted Open about how he affected wrestling. It was at WrestleMania 1. Um, there will never be another guy like him. He's the greatest fighter of all time, and, you know... He's not in pain and suffering anymore, so my thoughts and stuff go out to his family and everybody that he's affected. Two, Brock Lesnar is fighting at UFC 200. Um, huge announcement. Nobody saw this coming. He's fighting Mark Hunt. Um, I don't really know much about this guy, but I cover stuff on MMA. I'm serious. I'm starting to get more into MMA. I'm following it a little better. Um, this is huge. I th still think there's an exchange somehow with the WWE. I think Vince might have been put against the wall because it is Brock and, you know, he pretty much does what he wants. But I also feel that uh, there had to be some sort of exchange. I don't know if we're going to see it at SummerSlam. I don't know if we're going to see an MMA fighter come over from UFC. Maybe a McGregor, maybe a Rousey, maybe Josh Barnett and get involved in SummerSlam. But I feel like that's where this is going. Now, I didn't even realize this until somebody on Twitter last night asked me like a question and it was actually at Busted Open 2 because Brock is number two in my draft class and Scott Green at Scotty underscore ball game said at Busted Open Radio. So does Mayor Bear get credit in her Busted Open draft for a Brock Lesnar win at UFC 200 or does it only affect the squared circle? I think I should get bonus points already because like he's now he's in two federations and and they're two different things so like I should get bonus points already but yes I feel that if Brock wins that shoots my legitimacy up in my draft up so Brock don't get knocked out I know you don't like getting punched in the face but do me a freaking favor just do what you gotta do be the beast so, I may start, you know, reading tweets. If you guys have good questions for me, tweet at me at Marin underscore Bear. While I've set open at Bustle Open Radio. Um, have a good week. This is already going way too long. I will see you next week, hopefully. And uh, tweet at me. And follow my YouTube page, because I'm going to have other stuff coming up this week, alright? Late. <laughs>